We're now just a couple weeks out from the NFL draft, but I have already drafted 50 teams on stream so far in 2024. So we're going to talk about the players I'm most excited about right now. And there's going to be some guys uh, exposure wise, probably overexposed for what I should be. We're going to talk about it. Of course, going to also draft a big board team, Molly, the draft room here. Uh, again, entry number, actually technically entry number 49 for me in the big board, because we did get the first draft of the year on stream thrown out. Uh, but no, it is in fact, number 50 on stream overall. And that first draft, of course, that was the one that was going to win the big board. That one had to go away. Uh, but a lot of familiar names in here again. There was a, So I was in the room early, was hoping I could snap fill and then get a, a room full of regulars uh, that are not our regulars. But instead, uh, we have our guy Chad Candles, who's been in every room lately. Snatch Catchers in every room lately. Uh, Rish Hasu in every room lately. So we'll see what these guys do. Uh, who love seeing their names on screen. Uh, we are due... <laughs> They don't offend me that much. They haven't done anything to fuck me over in a room yet, as far as I'm aware of. But uh, whenever we see the same names over and over again, it does make me want to do that. But we'll persevere nonetheless. Uh, guys, I'm excited about. We're going to see some hopefully coming up on screen in a little bit here. And Jeff, of course, in an area where he cannot draft. So uh, he won't snipe anyone today or for the next one and a half months. There we go. Dad, dad, what are we? <laughs> uh, only one boy in the world can call me dad, dad. And that is, uh, he's at daycare right now. Hopefully having a great time. Uh, Christian McCaffrey goes 101. Of course, nothing surprising there. Tyreek at 102. Well, there's a surprise. CD Lamb coming down. Uh, CD Lamb holding out already, or I guess gearing up for a holdout. Uh, but it's already been out there that he's not going to report to camp looking for a new deal. Reports are that he could get around 130 million, probably reset the wide receiver market before Justin Jefferson basically resets the market again. So uh, CD Lamb goes at 105 here. And uh, I don't think that's why CD Lamb went at 105, but that is something where if the holdout lasts, even if it is just OTAs, you'll probably see CD Lamb start to come down a little bit because that is the kind of a dog brained approach that sometimes we see uh, pop up ADP wise. All right, Amon Ross St. Brown goes. Uh, we are in AJ Brown territory, who frankly, I don't have a lot of. He doesn't excite me very much, but it is a new Kellen Moore offense. We did see Keenan Allen have a monster year last year. Um, Keenan Allen also benefiting, of course, at a certain point from no Mike Williams out there. But I'll take AJ Brown, definitely low on AJ Brown. I have to imagine I'm definitely under the field on him, especially relative to first round running backs or wide receivers. Yeah, I only have 4% AJ Brown so far. So, but very low on AJ Brown. Really, really no reason besides the fact that he, Garrett Wilson, excite me the least, but that's basically it. Mm, daycare is a money-making machine. Yeah, daycare, you know, we, we pay a pretty amount. I think we're paying a, a grand a month, a little bit over that. for. And honestly, in LA, it would have been exponentially more. So uh, one of the perks of being out here for sure uh, compared to being in LA, but like, you know, uh, it's, it's a mid industry, but it's also like, uh, not enough daycares out there. Like we were on a wait list for a year too. So daycares are pretty rough. If you're, if you're having a kid at some point, uh, no matter where you're living or wherever you're expecting to live, you better make sure your ass is on that daycare list, like a year before the kid's born. <laughs> so you got, you got to know like, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to do cumsies in about three months. <laughs> so like, let's get on that daycare list. Kind of have a, how you're going to have to do it basically. All right. We're up here again. guess we could, we could build out a Philly thing. Uh, of course, me being a beloved fan of the Philadelphia region, living here uh, at gunpoint. I will take Marvin Harrison, though. Uh, Marvin Harrison, still people feels like pushing the Malik Neighbors agenda, which I'm happy. Like, I think Malik Neighbors is, is deserving to be consideration to be wide receiver one. But it's Marvin Harrison. Marvin Harrison's the prototypical guy uh, with the Hall of Fame dad, uh, with the ability to get downfield, create plays, pass sticks over and over and over again. Not that Malik Neighbors can't. Malik Neighbors actually a little bit better in EPA metrics, as we talked about here many times. Uh, 20 plus air yards or more. Malik Neighbors at about a 1.65. Uh, Marvin Harrison closer to 1.5, 1.6. So still both guys elite, incredible downfield. Uh, but we do see Malik Neighbors have some value. But that said, I think Marvin Harrison to me, there's a situation for Malik Neighbors where he goes in an offense that is not going to feed in the ball as aggressively, whether that be a Chicago, because there is a Keenan Allen and DJ Moore there. Uh, of course, Blake Neighbors has visited Chicago. It's on their top 30 visits. Could also be the Giants, where we just don't like the uh, situation that much, even though the Giants uh, apparently in the hunt for Drake May are the latest rumors, how they do that. Daniel Jones and his big contract, and also uh, having just signed Drew Locke. How could you do that? Uh, but that's another thing out there. Uh, so still lots to guess in this next two weeks here, that if you wanted to take a stand in your picks uh, in a draft, you certainly could. Sick. Uh, maybe that's a sign, Christopher, you could have taken a day off. 
of trying to get into every draft. But shout out Christopher. Happy birthday to him. But just, again, no, we don't have to be doing it every day, man. I know Christopher's entering multiple entries at once to be in the room. You can just be sick. It's okay to be sick. <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, guys, I'm excited about Marvin Harrison, one of them. Uh, that's going to be definitely one of the flag plants for me. Uh, not a brave flag plant by any stretch, but Harrison, my exposure for him on the year, 17.6% uh, so far on the big board. Obviously, once we do get to best ball mania, I'm probably going to be a little bit less aggressive. I would still think 16 to 20, though, for Harrison is where I'm comfortable. I'm assuming he doesn't get a shitty landing spot, but Harrison, to me, an elite talent. I'm excited to see what happens. And I do think, again, I have Brock Bowers on the thumbnail. So spoiler, another guy I'm excited to see. Uh, I am, uh, I think I am a little biased towards my excitement levels for rookies just because they are blank slates coming in that we hope the best for. So those are the guys I will say probably going to talk about a lot of rookies over the course of this video. That I'm excited for based upon the first 50 drafts I did. Also look at my exposures at the end of the video too, in case you guys are curious. Um, but Stefan Diggs, I will say in terms of vets, I'm excited for Stefan Diggs. I know people out there, I feel like the initial wave was like, oh, Texans are going to be the most exciting offense. And then immediately became like the backlash on social media where everybody's poking apart Stefan Diggs. Everybody's playing their, uh, claiming their things for, hey, Diggs is going to be bad. Nico Collins will still be better. Diggs might make this team worse, which how? Like, how can that, how could it get worse? <laughs> than what they had out there last year. The digs already working uh, with CJ Stroud was a report that was in the athletic uh, throwing apparently with tank Dell uh, with uh, digs, not Nico and with John Mechie. So I think it's a good sign for digs. Digs also paid hundred K for number one, the number one Jersey on Houston. So uh, he'll look faster if nothing else. So, and he got a single digit Jersey. A Jersey is going to look a little bit rejuvenated. Uh, so I uh, saw it even with Josh Jacobs and he was not as good as he was uh, the year that he had double digit jerseys. So, that's not really a data point, but nonetheless, I'm excited for Diggs. I'm excited for Diggs. If MHJ somehow ended up in LA, I'd like that. He can land anywhere, and I'm okay with it. If he goes to the Chargers, then he's just going to be the wide receiver one there, and we'll expect him to get 10 targets, and an offense is going to pass 20 to 25 times a game. Uh, if he goes anywhere else, you know, the hope is he gets a little more octane, high-octane kind of team, but he doesn't have to. When you're that talented, you kind of don't have to be on uh, the most aggressive team. It's just going to be better if you're on an aggressive team. Uh, the mock draft in the athletic today, though, I forget who did it. They have too many fucking people doing mock drafts. They had one today where it was like, um, who is it? Oh, they had the the Falcons trading up for Marvin Harrison, which I think would be asinine after you just paid Darnell Mooney and you have Drake London there. But I guess talent is talent. and Who knows? All right, we got AJ Brown, Marvin Harrison so far. Um, I mean, obviously Jalen Hurts would be a logical pick here. I, do I just want to do Philly bullshit? Uh, I'm just going to do Philly bullshit, I guess. We'll see if we can force Jalen Hurts back. Our guy Chad Candles, I can assume, will draft logically. Uh, QB the King may not, but if we get sniped on Jalen Hurts, it'll make us more unique, uh, so that's fine. I would like to get Jalen Hurts back to me. If it doesn't happen, I think it'll make us more unique is really the main summary point here. And I cannot, <laughs> I cannot trust a guy named QB the King to pass up an elite QB when he's got two picks on the turn. I know I missed the uh, turn off YouTube notifications. How dare you? How dare you, Bindles? Bindles is doing a good uh, job with his drafts as well. If you're looking for more uh, best ball draft content, check out some of Bindles' streams. QB the king here. Takes Cooper Cup with one. Is he going to take Jalen Hurts with the other? Let's find out. Bleeding the clock. Does seem like, by the way, if you're having issues with underdog with the freezing, I think that's gone away. Didn't have any issues yesterday. Didn't see anybody else reporting any issues, so... Hopefully that's out of the, the bug territory for them. And of course he takes Jalen Hurts. <laughs> it's unbelievable, guys. It's it really, it really is unbelievable. I don't think QB King is a regular. QB the King is a regular, so that's fine. Uh, but what, what do we expect here? What do we expect? You got to take an uncorrelated Jalen Hurts uh, at his normal ADP when you can get him. All right. Uh, I mean, it's, I think it's now just zero RB time for me. I think it's now just fuck the world kind of time <laughs> for me. Uh, I don't mind the decreasing price tag of tank Dell Rasheed rice. He gets, he can keep dropping for me. Don't mind reaching for Romo Dunze. I'm excited for Romo Dunze. I'm excited for tank Dell too. I think I'm more excited for Romo Dunze. Uh, I guess tank. The one thing I could say I'm excited for is I like the Houston offense overall, very much looking forward to seeing them hit the field. I think, you know, even if there's some growing pains out there with having to work digs in and certainly feed him enough to keep him happy. I do think that there's going to be a lot of upside. So 
I would have been excited for Tank. I think I'm more excited for Romo Dunze at this point. Uh, does seem like he's going to absolutely be getting top 10 draft capital. If not, top seven is where a lot of things are putting him now, where it's a run of QBs in the first four, then a run of wide receivers in the next three. And then I guess it's just defensive guys, alignment can just show up whenever. And that's how that's expected to go in a lot of the mock drafts that have been coming out lately. The team so far, A.J. Brown, Marvin Harrison, Devontae Smith, Romo Dunze, and we are better for getting sniped on Jalen Hurts because now it'll make us more unique. And QB the King, a dipshit. <laughs> That's what we're going to certify him as. I thought that was the case. Did, did say that, but shout out to anybody who is on Underdog and our guy Adam here pointing it out. Send an email to Underdog. They'll give you some money back for the draft issues. So if you did experience an issue with the freezing drafts, uh, feel free to reach out to support, which I recommended last week. So I'm glad that worked out. Jalen Hurts has averaged something like 13 rushing TDs a year as a starter. Hurts can get there without stacking him, but the stack is preferred. I mean, the thing is, like, if you're getting him unstacked, I've been getting him in the 50s in some of these rooms lately. So, like, or, you know, what, 40s? I think I got him in late 40s, and I think I got him at 50 flat in a draft recently. If that's the case, like, I just think it's a bad move to take him at ADP unstacked. Like, you can make it work. Again, you could tack on the, um, you know, Dallas Goddard late if you want to have some kind of correlation. Uh, but really... I don't know. You're not really cornering a market on the Eagles in a way where if they are a good team, you probably want to add in Saquon. You probably want to add one of the receivers, if not both. I kind of think that both receivers with Jalen Hurts maybe a little bit overowned uh, relative to what their actual outcome is going to be. But I think it's still just a, a dumb shit move to take an unstacked QB at the turn. Um, but, you know, that's it. Thank you. Happy 50th drafts. I appreciate that. And Liam is multi-tabling five drafts right now on stream. I mean, it's honestly the one thing I will say, uh, happy for Liam to do that and whatever. And I hope it brings him joy. That doesn't really actually make it that fun content wise. <laughs> I think, I think Pete and I both learned that, that the multi-tabling drafts, it just makes your teams a little bit worse. And it's not a great stream experience because you don't have one team to kind of tell your tale of as you go. So that'd be my recommendation for Liam, but more power to him. Don't watch the stream though. Stay here. Liam, you can watch any other time and it'll be fine. Oh, he's coming. I feel like, you know, Liam, all, all respect to him and all that. I don't know why he's programming against me and Pete. That seems like bad times <laughs> for trying to get the most views. But hey, five drafts at once. Anthony Richardson goes 51. Uh, composite reports about his throwing, throwing 40 times a day right now as he's still in his rehab. Also, eight, uh, the Fantasy Life newsletter, I think it was Ian writing it today. Uh, I guess he ate Chick-fil-A too. <laughs> so if you're if you're tracking AR's food consumption, he does enjoy uh, Chick-fil-A as a guy who grew up in Florida. Uh, but yeah, AR looking good. Uh, happy to take him at any point. Uh, but he goes 51 here to Rage Hasu. And then Snatch Catchers takes my guy, Terry McLaurin, so we will not get him at a discount again. Why I would really like to be in rooms with regulars, but it is what it is. Um, I'm not, honestly, this is my all-excited guys situation. I'm going up again, Brian Thomas. I, I just don't care at this point. I'm losing all the players <laughs> that would be, like to get a discount because these fucking rooms and QB the King took Jalen Hurts, so we're just getting some guys. And we're probably going extreme zero RB here. Mark Andrews goes to Chad Candles here. Well, the streamers exist outside of my sacred temple. Thank you. That's all. That's all I can ask. It's like uh, Legends of the Hidden Temple here. I want to be your Olmec. I want to be a giant stone head with red flashing eyes. Uh, Kiwi the King just taking all the all the mid. All right, zero zero five zero here. Uh, some nice things for Deontay Johnson. I feel like, uh, he seems very happy to be with Bryce Young. Bryce Young seems very happy to have him as well. Uh, Marquise Brown, not one of my favorites though, as a wide receiver six and a zero RB run, it wouldn't be bad. I'm also a little bit low on Kyle Pitts and exposures and I'm pretty enthusiastic about Atlanta too. So I'm going to take Kyle Pitts here. We end our extreme zero RB run, or I guess, you know, the wide receiver portion of our extreme zero RB run. We take Kyle Pitts, have a little more flexibility to add a rookie or two later on. Team so far, AJ Brown, Marvin Harrison, Devontae Smith, Romo Dunze, Brian Thomas Jr. So we have scooped up all the good rookie wide receivers besides Malik Neighbors, all guys I'm very excited for. Brian Thomas outside the top three um, in terms of draft capital, you'd expect, but he's still probably going top 15. So for Brian Thomas, uh, very enthusiastic about him and for... Uh, Marquise Brown, I'm less enthusiastic. <laughs> this is how that feels. Bucks bringing in Jonathan Brooks for a top 30 visit. Wow, yeah, that'd be really bad. Anybody who could be a pass catcher that comes into Tampa Bay is going to really hurt Rashad White. I would, 
I'd personally, if you get Rashad White at 60, you could take him. Um, I took him the other day at like what, late 40s. I could take him there. I guess if he's a little bit after ADP. Really would be mindful though of Rashad White does not being a key part of your portfolio right now. Feels like he is primed to be going in the 80s if they add anybody in that backfield in the draft. And Rashad White, as I mentioned many times here last year, because a lot of my fates in terms of my best teams and the best ball finals and draftings in particular, tied to Rashad White. Rashad White watched, you know, the Bucks games in full. He was not getting as much work down that home stretch. And in particular, a lot of Chase Edmonds coming in. At one point, they had brought Keyshawn Vaughn in. Uh, There's trying anything out there to not have Rashad White, in particular in the pass game. And some of his biggest games last year was when he was heavily involved in the pass game. But Baker was thrown to him, you know, eight to ten times. So I would say for Rashad White, you know, I, I think he's going the wrong way. But we'll see. 2.4% is completely fine. I mean, you could have exposure to some guys. I just, you know, you can even be with the field on Rashad White if structurally you thought it was a good thing to like, you draft some wide receivers, take Rashad White as your anchor back, or maybe like, you know, two backs out of the first couple rounds. I, I personally wouldn't do that, but I think there's a way to draft with it uh, being okay. Uh, you take Rashad White there. I think that that's like an okay thing to do. Uh, but, you know, like, it's still just about, I wouldn't go crazy on him. And I'm sure there are people that were like, Rashad White was so great last year. Going into year three is going to be even better. And he just analytically wasn't that great. And let me confirm that's true with some of the EPA numbers we always talk about here. Rashad White's a negative 0.1 EPA per rush. He was better in the pass game. So it is kind of odd uh, that they were trying to squeeze him out a little bit there. But 0.24 EPA per pass um, certainly could also be the offense a little bit there too. Uh, only a 9.9% avoid a tackle rate for Rashad White. And these are the years for Rashad White that he should have the most juice. Like he should be shiftier than Joe Mixon. And he's basically less shifty than Joe Mixon. Uh, so Rashad White to me, I just think didn't show enough, especially in the run game. And I'm um, in the past game. They're trying to take the work from him. 0% Rashad White. Wow. I don't have zero. Uh, I, let me see what my exposure is for Rashad White. Yeah, I've got 2%. Looks like I took him in one big board. So that's my Rashad White. Which I think I did within the last week. Uh, so that's how that goes for me. All right, we're on the clock here. Brock, ugh, fucking snatch cap. You're killing me, man. He just takes every player a pick before I want it. Like, go in other draft rooms, please. Zero, zero, five, one. God. Uh, all right. Guys, I'm excited for, this is another one that I am excited for here. I think he's a much better pick at this ADP than Ramondre Stevenson, frankly, better than Tony Pollard. DeAndre Swift, uh, just rising with the Chicago Bears tied, I think it would look pretty good. So DeAndre Swift would have been very excited to have Brock Bowers in the video with Brock Bowers in the thumbnail, uh, but unfortunately we don't get him today. And it's okay. We have Kyle Pitts, so it's fine. I do like the two elite tight ends. I think Pete talked about this in his draft stream yesterday. Uh, just drafting two elite tight ends or two tight ends, I guess, really in the top tight end grouping. And then just having that be it. So you can kind of tag some stacks on later. Um, I think it works this year. Uh, I think there's an easier way to work around too, especially right now with wide receiver ADPs to make that work. So uh, I would love the build with Pitts and Bowers. But Bowers to me, he's on the thumbnail for a reason. I'm probably the most excited. I guess besides Jaden Daniels, I'm the most excited for him. Yeah, I know. I know. Would like it to be different, Bob. Fortunately, people get a little obsessive. Uh, but love the double elite side end. I agree. I look, it's it's a good format to do this with, and especially right now. And BBM, I think it's kind of be a little bit less plentiful, but it's a good time, really. So I mentioned a lot, like a double elite tight end feels good. I still think late tight end feels good enough as long as you're getting you know good volume there. So yeah, that's that's how I mostly feel about it. Uh, Ramondre, again, probably one of the least excited players for me. Tony Pollard, not really the most excited for him. Uh, Jalen Warren this year is not it for me. I am excited for Raheem Mostert at this ADP still. I think it comes up in BBM. Um, he's been coming up a little bit so far. There was a point where you get Mostert in the 100s. Now he's going, uh, obviously, an 87 ADP, uh, but I'm taking a pick 87 as well. I think he should be in the 70s. Uh, I think if I were ranking these guys, I would put... Hmm... Man, this is actually a tough range to say. I would honestly bump JSN down a little bit. I'd probably bump Swift up. I'd bump Mostert up. And I'd keep Warren and Najee pretty much even. But I think that Mostert should at least be in round seven. I think you can make the case he should go ahead of Kamara. Probably not Connor, but maybe Connor too. But I am more enthusiastic for Mostert than I guess some may be. 
Rome could go to the Bears. Swift opens up the Caleb stack. Oh, it's true. That's true. Yeah, Rome, I mean, he's been linked to the Bears. They had him for a top 30 visit. So, and that was one that came on, you know, early. I think before they acquired Keenan Allen, it made a little bit more sense. I I personally don't think you do that, but Keenan Allen's old enough that maybe you bring in somebody. And frankly, if you're young, like if you are a young wide receiver, uh, I think they'd be better off drafting somebody later. You know, draft um draft Tez Walker. Like that'd be good for the Bears. I think another downfield guy who's gonna learn a little bit more from Keenan Allen and DJ Moore, you would hope. Uh, though I guess he would have made this case, or I would have for Quentin Johnson last year. And what did what, what did he learn from Keenan Allen? Seemingly absolutely nothing. But uh, if you're a young guy coming in, I think going in with those two guys, um, and then Caleb as well, like you're gonna probably improve at the highest rate, or at least improve fantasy wise at the highest rate. Do I think Khalil Herbert or Justin Herbert? I don't think Justin Herbert goes anywhere. Khalil Herbert should, but it's odd they haven't cut him yet. If like if they were going to cut him, you'd think they would do it already. Uh, but maybe they're going to see if they get somebody in the draft, or maybe Herbert, you know, hasn't bitched enough yet about it. And then I don't know. But it seems like they're going to keep him too, and and Roshan. A lot of builds lately have got elite tight end plus two late right tight ends. Yeah, that's fine. That's that's perfectly acceptable too. I mean, I think there's just a lot of ways to carve up tight end that I, I don't think there's like a winning strategy this year that like one where I'm like, oh, you got to have this. You know, to me personally, I would say like getting one guy in this Pitts Bowers range here, uh, I think would look the best. Obviously, I'm okay taking McBride. I'm okay taking Andrews. Uh, they're taking a little bit less Andrews this year than I would have thought. Uh, but like, honestly, all these guys are fine for part of a two a tight end build, part of a a three tight end bill, but you just have to have those capital buckets, right? Like we always talk about where, you know, if you're not taking running back early, like I usually am not, and you're trying to take, you know, seven, eight running backs, you know, at varying degrees later, uh, if you're taking a bunch of wide receivers early, you don't want to go too heavy at wide receiver. The same thing for tight end, where if you take two elite tight ends, I would definitely wouldn't take the third, but people probably still do that a good amount. Senate pass of Sanders. Yeah, the, the testing for Sanders not being that good, I think made Senate uh, more likely to be tight end too. I've always thought Senate was a better player, uh, both visually and the analytics look better to me than Jatavian Sanders. Uh, and Sanders not being an elite athlete, I think makes it hard for me to want to buy in. All right, we got picks coming up here. I'm sure knowing our guy Snatch Catchers is going to take Caleb Williams or some shit. <laughs> so whatever, whatever is going to make my day slightly more difficult. Let's see what he does. All right, hello goes up for Lad McConkey. Adam in the chat, I'm sure his desk is rising. I am going to take Caleb here just because I don't trust QB the King to not take a third QB. You don't end up with the name QB the King without loving QBs. So Caleb will take him here for the correlation with Swift, if not Romo Dunze. We'll see what these next couple picks do. Yeah, tough part for me right now is like, I really don't have correlation. I have correlation with Pitts. Obviously, Jalen Hurts went early, so uh, we cannot stack up our Philly guys. Uh, so I'm basically making up imaginary correlation or doing it late with somebody else. <laughs> That's early for Lad, even for Adam. Well, there you go. <laughs> I mean, honestly, Chad, uh, Christopher's a regular here, so Adam, you might have influenced him as much as I've influenced him. Yes, please get those likes up, guys. We're 20 minutes in here, and I haven't done my, my shilling, but please subscribe, hit that like button, leave a comment down below. Your support does go a long way here, of course, uh, trying to fight off Liam on his draft streams, doing five tables at once, but also just in general helping out with YouTube. Uh, the more that you guys hit the like button, especially if you enjoy this content, the more it's going to be shown to people like you, and that's the goal here as we try to build this channel up and get into prime shape in time for when BBM is out. Of course, the NFL draft coming up soon, my SPAG rankings coming out, which I was back working on a little bit more. Uh, it's been a busy time here with everything we've got going on, but happy to be here on Splash Play every day, Monday to Friday, uh, doing a draft at 11 a.m. One, two, five, one here. This is absolutely a running back pocket for me. Um, and I've already got to, you know, no QB correlation I need to go up and get. Nick Chubb, 20 picks after ADP doesn't feel that bad, given that I have some coverage there. And I have so much Jerome Ford. I actually saw before the show, he's one of my highest exposed players. I am going to take Nick Chubb here. So I'll give the team a read. All right, there we go. Uh, Caleb Williams, my QB right now. DeAndre Swift, Raheem Mostert, Nick Chubb at running back. Uh, A.J. Brown, Marvin Harrison Jr., Devontae Smith, Romo Dunze, Brian Thomas Jr., Kyle Pitts at tight end. The reason I'm willing to take Nick Chubb here, number one, we are 
uh, fucking almost 20 picks after ADP. Number two, I have enough guys here with DeAndre Swift um, and also Raheem Mostert. Expecting those guys to be good week one through week eight at the very least, hopefully the entire year. But they're going to be good that early part of the season, if nothing else. So the hope is Nick Chubb, give him enough time to recover, and he's still going to be a goal line back for Cleveland. I don't love Nick Chubb in the 90s and the 110s. You can get me there. Had to probably do last night on bets for the national championship. I didn't do content for it, so I didn't know. And I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm sure about the same as it normally does, which per sport, we have a 12 to 20% ROI. I think in NCAA this year, it was about 16.7%. So probably about that. Um, but yeah, no, it's, I didn't do that one because I did uh, MLB yesterday. We did hit a couple of home run bets, including, uh, I never go say things like this, but I'm trying to be a little more um, in line with our competitors about the wordings I choose and things like that. Uh, like, oh, Shohei Otani, I put in our top five bets yesterday. I was like, if I'm going to take any home run bet, that I would have enough confidence, like in one of those uh, a burglars trying to threaten your life if only a bet hits. Uh, I was like, Shohei Otani home run bet would be the one I would take. And that did hit. A couple of really long plus EV ones as well for baseball, which is, a hard to bet with baseball. Like it's not the same as basketball where you have a bunch of bets. You have 40% to 60% probabilities uh, for baseball. It's like your best betting approach is going to be taking like the home run bets, these uh, over 13.5, which hit as well for us. I'm um, in the Rangers game. So like weird things in baseball where you have to like make your money while you're going four and 10 on the day. And I think we went like five and they went five and 10 yesterday, but it was like good for two units. So baseball's weird betting. That's what I would say. Chubb, hell no, nah, I'm going to go watch. <laughs> That's cruel. That's cruel. But yeah, Nick Chubb, I think really overall, um, a player that in this kind of build makes sense, but there really aren't a ton of builds uh, where Nick Chubb makes sense. Guys I'm excited for, by the way, Caleb Williams, excited for him. I think my exposures don't really back that out, though. Uh, Caleb, exposure-wise, I'm only at 9.8% Caleb Williams, so... I think it should be higher. I think it will be higher for me in BBM. But Caleb, I've started to get, I think it was slow to get there in the beginning. And then at a certain point, I talked about on stream, fell back in love with him, watching the tape again, looking into his numbers, trying to understand how things did go south for him, where he did regress pretty meaningfully this year, especially in terms of his accuracy, especially under pressure, where he was objectively not a good QB under pressure. But I think a little bit more hero ball, USC's offensive line, and the defense also letting him down at every turn you kind of can make sense of it through that lens. And again, he's still added value EPA wise at every level, but under pressure, like he might have, he might have a Jordan love esque start with how he handled pressure. If that carries over uh, where like, I think he's going to start a little skittish and they're going to have to coach it out of him. And hopefully Chicago can do that with the people they have coaching now. Um, This is, I feel like this pick has been taken forever. <laughs> It's like, are we, are we frozen here? Because the board has not moved at all. But no, the board is going at its own leisurely pace, I suppose. Um, Any guys else that I'm really excited by? Troy Franklin, still excited by. Uh, He's loosely linked to Carolina, though Carolina could take a lot of different guys, and I think they'd make sense. But he did have a top 30 visit with Carolina. Um, He's also, again, uh, on his, the list of guys that people think can go to Carolina in round two, maybe round three. Troy Franklin's right there with Roman Wilson, with Ladd, with... Uh, with Xavier Worthy right there. So Franklin going to Carolina, I don't think would be a bad outcome just because of the available targets, having Deontay Johnson there to take some pressure off. But Deontay Johnson would be a big enough target earner that I don't know that Troy Franklin would hit uh, hit the ceiling that he's capable of this year. Blue List here takes Jaden Daniels. I would have been okay taking Jaden on the way back as well. Uh, it's Blue List's first QB, which frankly, if you're going to take a first QB, and would be nice if he had McLaurin, but... For Jaden, obviously a good guy to fucking snatch catchers takes Kirk Cousins. He does have Drake London. All right. So no, no Kirk Cousins for our Kyle Pitts. That's okay. One, three, five, one. I'm gonna have to start the fucking draft at like a, a 10 45 tomorrow. Just so I can get away from some of you. Um, I'm going to take Zach Charbonnet here to try to, to keep, do I want Charbonnet or Jalen Wright? Still a believer in Charbonnet. Still a believer in Charbonnet. I'll take him here. Team so far is a one, four, five, one. Have to add a second QB at some point, but we're not there yet. How do I feel about Xavier Leggett? Uh, I feel great that everybody's now comparing him to AJ Brown when I think I was the first person in the world to say that. Uh, so I love hearing that. And, be, like, and honestly, it's ever, it's fantasy people. It's like people in, um, in athletic kind of articles. So 
Uh, but I feel great about him. I think he's a good pick. Obviously, you know, the draft capital where he goes, having a pathway there. Like I felt good about JSN last year, and then he got the situation he got where um, just being behind two stalwarts at wide receiver isn't the best thing, uh, especially one of them plays your best position. Uh, so for, you know, that's still a big part of the equation, but I feel good about like it. But again, if he goes to Seattle, he's their wide receiver four, probably less good. Wow, all my 30% like it was in the 15th round. I did not get that much like it. I definitely have a good amount of like it, but, uh, and I've bought him lower for sure. Yeah, I'm at 20% like it right now, but I'll look at my exposures again when we finish the draft because I feel like 50 drafts is a good time to check in on that. Uh, I don't mind taking another another running back here. Cole Komet would correlate with our Caleb Williams. I just worry that they could fucking bring in Brock Bowers. I'll take Cole Komet here. Tight end two could be some logic in pushing him further down, but it's okay. We'll just take him here. Team so far, we're hopefully done at tight end. I would say with that, a one, four, five, two Caleb Williams at QB, DeAndre Swift, Raheem Mostert, Nick Chubb, Zach Charbonnet at running back wide receiver, AJ Brown, Marvin Harrison, Jr. Devontae Smith, Romo Dunze, Brian Thomas, Jr. I would say besides the Philly guys, uh, all wide receivers. I'm very excited about and a tight end Kyle Pitts. And I'm not excited about Cole Komet. I think Cole Komet can be good this year, but they're signing Gerald Everett, bringing in Brock Bowers for a top 30 visit. Those things worry me about how they're viewing Cole Komet coming in um, with Caleb Williams, but they paid him so much money last year that it really doesn't make any sense what they're doing. I th but I think they're just selling out right now to get uh, Caleb the best shots to hit the ground running. So I got it. Hmm. Didn't get much when he did get the ball. He was electric. Mossasu. I'm not sure what we're talking about. Are we talking about Chase Brown? Yeah, Chase Brown. Yeah, you know, Chase Brown acquitted himself really well last year, uh, especially for a guy that kind of got exposed getting 28 touches a game at Illinois the year before. Um, he wasn't equipped to do that. And Illinois, you know, I, I just didn't think I wasn't impressed by the film. Uh, I did know he was a track guy. So obviously there was some upside there. Uh, but her coming to Cincinnati, you know, I think that he is very live to take work away. I don't think he should ever be a 20 touch back just because it's. He was really bad. Like he was really bad at Illinois, like really inefficient in the pass game and in the run game. Um, but when you, you know, when you cut the volume down to touches, you see what he did last year. So I think he's a perfectly good 10 to 15 touchback, uh, like Jalen Warren, but a little bit less, a little bit less sturdy, probably. I think Moss is a decoy. Moss is the goal line back and short yardage, probably. Chase Brown is a good story. Him and his brother both. Who's his brother? I'm more a fan of the Amon Ross St. Brown, Equinemius St. Brown connection. You want Bub Means? Heard he got a good IRS score. Maybe the next Puka? No, no. There's there's too many actual guys. I've, I've said this a lot, so I apologize to the regulars who hear me make these points, but when people, you know, when they're setting me up for the take, I have to give the take. There's too many good receivers in the top 15, top 20 who have great RIS, uh, you know, poor performances. I won't say RIS scores. People hate that. Um, that had great relative athletic scores that also had really great analytic stuff like the bub means of the world, even the Javon Bakers, even the Jermaine Burton's like maybe one of them hits, but it's so flimsy when you have rookies coming in that are going to have better situations, are better players, are better athletes. So I, I wouldn't do it, but you know, like people want to take Garendo. I get it. It's possible. Uh, but I would wait until after BBM for those guys that are really fringe. Like, Maybe um, maybe Buffalo loves Bub Means, and it's like, wow, we got They went out of their way to get Bub Means. He's going to be the guy they're bringing in to get a lot of targets to. That's something that can happen. But if you're making that guess right now, I would say that's a bad guess to make. So that's what I would do. Avoid day three rookies. Okay. Uh, Sydney Brown. Sydney Brown. All right. There we go. Of course, I'm a, a known safety lover. <laughs> that's what I am. One, four, five, two. Snatch catchers once again takes a player. <laughs> that we would love to get because he is trying to kill me today. Uh, all right. This is not good for me at QB. I am not delighted with this situation here. I'm going to take Braylon Allen. I feel like the size is getting him on people's radar a little bit more. Uh, the early breakout stuff, I feel like increasing the touting on him enough that I think the ADP is going to rise a little bit. I personally would still rather have Marshawn Lloyd. As we talked about Braylon Allen, not a positive analytic back. But he is young enough um, and good enough athlete, even though Marshawn Lloyd, better athlete for his size. But take Braylon Allen here. 
Oh, I just need just need a different draft room. <laughs> I hate to I hate to bring this up because it's it was a drag on me about a month ago. But fuck, man, just not being able to get any of the guys is killing me. Christopher, you're taking every guy, man. You know, you just just try some different drafts that aren't on stream. Is all I would ask of you, please, please. It's not good for me. It's not good for the content. It's not good for anybody here. I appreciate you on your birthday. So you're giving you the grace and a smile today. Tomorrow, not so much. One five five two. No correlation with Tampa Bay. Really, no correlation with anything at this point. So I'm just going to take a good QB. Sorry to Mike Evans owner, but I'm getting scooped on everything here. Baker Mayfield uncorrelated. Come on down. We'll add Josh Palmer. We'll make the case in our head that Romo Dunze is going to go to Tampa Bay as the protege for Mike Evans. Whatever it might be here, but we're taking Baker. Still live for a JJ McCarthy as well. Honestly, might be a Michael Penix team today just because got to have a third QB, I think, at this point. Real now could luck his way into the Cowboys starting running back. He's allowed to be the biggest rise with the start of BBM. <sighs> he could. He could. I mean, I still think Bucky Irving live for Dallas, too. Really wish that Estime went to Dallas for a top 30 visit. I think that he's a guy that, to me, would be the best version of what they're going to be looking for with that goal line back. Uh, Christopher, why are the Christopher's ganging up here? To be clear, it's not about getting sniped. It's about every player that I would get at a reasonable ADP in other rooms getting taken one pick before me um, over and over again. So I just, you know, again, I would like to have a good portfolio. So I have to police this stuff myself. And it worked well a couple weeks ago. And frankly, just need to remind people here that it's not about you on stream. It's about just showing draft rooms and how I handle them. Low hit rates. Both guys have plus analytics. Who are we talking about here? Oh, Puka. Um, Pacheco didn't have great analytics. Puka did. Pacheco didn't have good competition or good analytics. He just was a guy that the Chiefs fell in love with and gave him the draft cap. Well, actually, they didn't even give him the draft cap. They just gave him the runway. Puka was good analytically. The flaw with him is that he didn't run enough routes. But um, people who were really heady to what uh, BYU was doing were like that the coach was an idiot and was basically using Puka in incorrectly. And despite that, Puka had success. So the one thing you'd say for Puka or the lesson you take away from Puka is that you know, guys who have a smaller sample size of routes, maybe be more open-minded if they are. You're getting really like EPA world beaters who command targets at a high rate. So there are a few of those guys in this class, you know, but you, it's, I don't want to squint your eyes too hard trying to find a Puka. Tonio Gibson, number 12 in New England now. Weird jersey choice for a running back, but that's the world we live in. Audrey Gastamigo is 171. Still excited for Estime. Really, I worry about the draft capital, but I think he as a player is going to lead to something fun for himself. Give the team a read here before we make our next pick. Again, again really been abused at QB by our friends in the room. Caleb Williams and Baker Mayfield at QB. DeAndre Swift, Raheem Mostert, Nick Chubb, Zach Charbonnet, Braylon Allen. Wide receiver, still only five. A.J. Brown, Marvin Harrison Jr., Devontae Smith, Romo Dunze, Brian Thomas Jr., and a tight end, Kyle Pitts and Cole Komet. So even though we did not go full extreme zero RB, we're going pretty zero RBE and uh, going to have to make it up late with a few interesting guys. I was thinking about taking Kate Otten because I took Baker Mayfield. Again, our guy Christopher here takes him. The theme of the draft of today. Um, I'm going to add Malachi Corley. Actually, no, Wandale or Malachi? That's actually a tough call. Malachi seems pretty valued by a lot of teams coming in. Wandale, less valued. But Wandale, we know, has a real ceiling. Going Wandale. How do I feel about drafting uh, about drafting RB room? No, I, I still let's think that's not the move for me. Uh, it obviously would have worked out okay. Like, you know, if the ADPs are cheap enough, like last year, Mostert and A-Chan would have been, I guess, uh, two running backs in the same room you'd have been happy to have. But I kind of think that's like a lo-fi outcome. I'm not even going to read the chats anymore, bud. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just, I, I need a break sometimes. I feel like I'm in a relationship with people who end up in every draft room. And I just need, I need a breather for me. Uh, I am going to, fuck. Just getting, losing every QE is really throwing me for a loop here. 
I do anything left at QB or do I want to keep adding wide receivers? You know what? I'm excited enough for Tez Walker, even though, as I mentioned, there are flaws in his game analytically could have been better in college, especially for the fact that he was one of the top leaders for wide receivers in air yards. Uh, but for Tez Walker, I think the one thing for him is that um, being an elite athlete, earning air yards at that level, the hope is that if you do even a fractional amount of that again as a pro, I think he does make sense. So he fits, honestly, the archetype that I'm building here where he is cheap Brian Thomas. He is cheap Romo Dunze. Um, I wouldn't say he's cheap Marvin Harrison. Marvin Harrison, a better route runner, a more polished player. Uh, Tez Walker is also cheap AD Mitchell. Like any of these guys are going to be outside players who get downfield. Tez is just a cheaper version of that right now. So to me, uh, he is a player that I'm willing to do that with. <laughs> I do. I need space. Like I, this, you're here to conversation. I've had a lot of people in my life. You done the ETR podcast like Walker? Okay, good. I mean, look, Walker, the main thing he benefited from was Drake May throwing it downfield a lot. Like, I wasn't wowed by the numbers, which I should be if you're getting as many air yards as he had. Uh, he had last year 162 air yards per game, which is ahead of even Romo Dunze with Michael Penix being a historical chucker. Tez Walker also had three deep targets a game and only a 0.27 EPA. And I know, like I mentioned the comps a lot. So 0.27 EPA on three deep targets a game. So the most volume of deep targets didn't perform that well with him. Uh, by comparison, Malik Neighbors had a 1.6 EPA, uh, rounded down actually 1.64. Uh, and on two deep targets a game, Marvin Harrison, a 1.58 EPA on 1.8 deep targets a game. So like, what's the, what's the thing there really for those guys? Like, is it that Tez is good enough to earn targets downfield or is it that Tez could not capitalize? Like what do you want to look at more? I'm going to choose to look at the fact that he earned it today, but I do think it's a major flaw that like you that's three 20 plus air yard targets a game is a lot. Like that's more than anybody in football in the NFL had last year. Uh, Tyreek, I think had like what two and a half. Yeah. Tyreek had 2.2. Justin Jefferson had 2.3. So like, Tez, I can go either way, but because he's an elite athlete, like I'm willing to take the shot. Yeah, 9.9 .9 RAS, I agree. Let's see. Like Snatch catcher setting himself up to take Brendan Rice <laughs> coming up. I'm going to guess. Uh, who's the most underrated player not getting drafted? It's Brendan Rice. It's Brendan Rice. Brendan Rice linked to so many teams that wanted to see him. Hall of Fame pedigree with his dad, whether that matters or not. I don't think it hurts. Yeah, you know, it's clearly not driving up his ADP, so I think it's still positive. Uh, all right, Snatch Catchers takes Malik Washington, and I am going to get Brendan Rice just because I would like to shore up my wide receiver room a little bit more because we went so long without another one. Brendan Rice, come on down. You are my wide receiver eight. 2582, I think we are done at wide receiver. We have Brendan Rice basically didn't ever catch the steam because he wasn't a great enough athlete. Um, he, if you go to the RAS testing for Brendan Rice, you will see that it's just like everything is, I believe, yellow on there, which means that you're better than average in everything. He's better than average in everything. He's not elite in anything, but his dad was average in everything. So we're at least moving in the right direction on that front. Brendan Rice, if you watch Caleb Williams highlights, you'll see Brendan Rice and you'll go like, holy shit, like why is Brendan Rice the only one making plays? It's like one Taj Washington play and it's like 10 in a row of Brendan Rice slash Caleb Williams doing wonky scrambles and bullshit. All right, we've got a pick coming up here. 12% of Brendan Rice think he sneaks in a day two. I hope so. Yeah, it's it's telling that there are so many teams wanting to see him and like good teams too. Like the Niners wanted to see him, the Bills wanted to see him. Uh, you know, like I think he's got something for himself. All right, two five eight two here. Could use one more running back. I think with this team here again, we have a lot of early season production. Can try to take flyers on guys coming back, maybe bouncing out. I think J.K. Dobbins is that guy. Uh, J.K. Dobbins really feels like he got negative steam from. Uh, when we did see him not get the deal for Kansas City, uh, he, he was going at one point. He was up to like the 160s, I feel like. And now we're back down to 200s. And nothing changed really for J.K. Dobbins. It's just that nobody signed him, which is not a great sign. But for this kind of team, Dobbins was a great running back before he got hurt yet again. Uh, I, I like Dobbins as a bet at this point. If he gets frothy again, I kind of don't want to be there. The only one not taking a Bonnie Conda, uh, Pat Corain, I think was caping for a Bonnie Conda. And he's obviously, you know, one of the foremost 
uh, Brees Hall guys. So, but I think he's just a pure handcuff, maybe a pure handcuff that breaks a couple of touchdowns because he's got that Brees Hall speed. Certainly not the Brees Hall vision, not the Brees Hall hands. He's got, he's got probably better speed than Brees Hall or at least flat, you know, flat, even. Say the great Jerry Rice was average athletically. He was not an athletic freak by any stretch. I think he ran like a four or five something. Yes, that's what we were talking about, Terrence. <laughs> that's what we were talking about. Oh God, it's, it's today's the day where just the, the chat, the chat, and the people who get in the draft room just want to <laughs> make it hard on a Tuesday. But guys, you know what? It's another draft here, draft number fifty. It's a celebration today. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. No matter how no matter how much my EV gets sniped away by people who know the players I like and where I want to take them, still show up and do the drafts every day. That is the promise here. Of course, underdog promo code splash on there if you want to support our 50th draft and you're not an underdog, a double your deposit up to $100 on there with the promo code splash. And also, hey, check out probably my sports betting app. Only place that's going to tell you, hey, Shohei Otani might hit a home run. Definitely the only place that'll tell you that that Rangers-Astros game is going over 13 and a half, which was the max line, the max alt line yesterday um, on DraftKings. But uh, probably, of course, great sports betting data for yourself. Best way to support Splash Plays, hit that join button down below, four nine eight a month. A second way to support Splash Plays, support probably, because those are, my, those are my businesses and they go hand in hand. And while our pick's about to come up, uh, Masters coming up this week. I'll be putting in a few entries. $10 Millie Maker for PGA on DraftKings. So try out the Sims. I'd recommend it. One week of the Sims for yourself, checking out PGA. Um, probably still a good advantage for MMA. I think UFC 300s this weekend. Uh, Sims tools for stochastic, for sports that are not MLB and NBA in particular. I mean, honestly, you need it just to be even with the field. But if you're in a sport where there's just less of those, um, I think you're going to do well for yourself playing Sims for PGA. All right. We have Baker Mayfield. We could take Trey Palmer to give us one more micro bit of correlation. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. I was willing to take Kate Otten just to stack somebody with Baker. I'll take Trey Palmer here. Second favorite Palmer in drafts behind Josh Palmer right now. You can make the case, honestly, that in the 19th round, you should be a little excited for Trey Palmer just because there's a shot that he could supplant Chris Godwin, who already was kind of making some noise with his wife bitching about stuff last year. Uh, I don't think that's like a, that's not like a 50% probability, probably not even a 60% or, or rather, you know, like 40% going Palmer's way. Um, I think it's probably more like a 10% outcome, but it's possible he could supplant. And frankly, if Evans got hurt, like Trey Palmer is the handcuff for Mike Evans on that front. It would benefit Godwin, but it would benefit Trey Palmer probably a little bit more. Uh, all right. Two, six, nine, two here. Still think Justice Hill shouldn't be free. He's going to be my RB7 to close out the team. Uh, 2792 is the final team here. Caleb Williams, Baker, Mayfield, the QB. Running back, DeAndre Swift, Raheem Mostert, Nick Chubb, Zach Charbonnet, Braylon Allen, J.K. Dobbs, and Justice Hill. The two scat backs of Baltimore reunited. The Dobbins, he's more than a scat back. Um, A.J. Brown, Marvin Harrison Jr., Devontae Smith got sniped on Jalen Hurts. Couldn't get him. Romo Dunze, Brian Thomas Jr., Wandale Robinson, Tez Walker, Brennan Rice, Trey Palmer. This room honestly very much sums up. If we had Malik neighbors in here, it would be every rookie wide receiver. I'm excited about um, with Tez Walker being the least of them. Uh, but these guys all definitely ones that I would believe in for the most part. And then you could add in your lads. If you want your lads and leg it, leg it would definitely be one that would be part of mine. If you're looking at portfolios in a second too. If you guys want to stay tuned, uh, Kyle Pitts and Cole Komet close out the seam. So Interesting team. They could have been better in a room where we just didn't have regulars doing the same shit, but you know, that's how it goes. All right. Exposures. Let's look at them. Obviously we'll not include that draft because that's still going on, uh, but we're going to look at exposures here and let's do only big board. All right. So my most exposed QBs so far, uh, we got Jaden Daniels at 35%. Um, he has been a bailout for me a lot. He's also somebody I'm taking. So you guys know with McLaurin, I'm also sometimes taking to new England uh, for the most part though. I believe Jaden Daniels goes to Washington and I'll keep making that bet. And if it ends up wrong, hopefully McLaurin still gets like McCarthy or may, which actually McLaurin's going to be fine no matter what, but I would like to get the correlation with Jaden Daniels. If I can, uh, AR is at number two here, 16%. So again, not going too crazy exposure wise at QBs besides Jaden Daniels, uh, much like I did last year with AR, uh, Drake may 14% for me. Again, another bailout Bryce young. He's so cheap. He's my QB three a lot. 
Same thing for J.J. McCarthy here, who I have pinned very early on. I said he was going to be uh, going in the top four, top five. Um, I've been making that bet. Thought he's, I think he's honestly probably a better pick than Drake May if you're a team that like actually wants to win a championship. Uh, for fantasy, we prefer Drake May. For real life, probably J.J. McCarthy. Our running backs, 50 drafts in here. Uh, we have Jerome Ford, Marshawn Lloyd. So uh, Jerome Ford is probably the big stand here. Logic for this one. Uh, Nick Chubb is going to be on that pup list most likely. That means missing a month. They brought in Deontay Foreman. Deontay Foreman's just not that great. He's probably going to do same version of what Kareem Hunt did last year, stealing goal line work. Ford, though, was explosive, looked good. Another year of improvement for him. And frankly, I thought he came on really strong down the home stretch. Jerome Ford is one of my higher exposed players here. Marshawn Lloyd, number two. I've been making that bet the entire time. Chase Brown, been making this bet as well the entire time. Uh, Zach Moss being there would look better if they didn't sign Zach Moss. But it's a guy that Chase Brown can beat out. And again, he could be effective in 10 to 15 touches a game. Chase Brown, to me, would be, for me, he's this year's Jalen Warren is how I feel about him. Uh, Kendra Miller, I think I've taken him a bit less more lately. Um, Calvin Kamara's coming back to New Orleans. That's the main thing that spooks me off of going heavy on Kendra. I think he's really talented. I don't love Dylan Labe being linked to being a top 30 visit for the Saints. If they bring in a pass catcher, Kendra might get kind of fucked. Uh, but he's still somebody where like he could win that job or he could end up Keyshawn Vaughn territory and neither outcome would shock me too much. And then Bucky Irving here at uh, number five. So Bucky Irving, uh, he and estimate two guys I've been taking less. Uh, I do think for Irving, he, him, he's still getting some good visits and he did look good in his drills. So that's the part we're looking at, but really bad athletic testing for him. Same thing for estimate where he just wasn't fast enough. The overall RAS wasn't that bad for estimate though. Uh, but he hasn't been getting enough visits, I think, to make me feel good about it. I still want exposure to these guys because they were performers in college and they're going to get out there. If they're on a practice field or in a game, they're going to perform but the draft capital might be tough for Irving and Estime, so that is why I've been ramping back down on them. Wide receiver, we got Malik Neighbors, Brian Thomas, Terry McLaurin. Neighbors, my highest exposed at 30%. Just think he's mispriced, uh, as we've seen, I guess, in social media uh, lately, and honestly, in draft rooms, too. Uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. is the wide receiver one, but Neighbors isn't that far off. A little bit worried about Neighbors' outcomes. If he goes to a Giants, if he goes to a Titans, uh, it's going to be tough for him to be the guy that he should be, uh, but he's still going to have explosive plays. He'll still be good, uh, but I'm hoping he goes somewhere where it's like an open depth start. If he's the guy that goes to the Cardinals, I think things will look pretty good for him. Uh, Brian Thomas Jr. again. Uh, Sark Hitler loves these wide receivers. I appreciate that. Brian Thomas and Bynum since he was cheaper. We'll continue to do so. Love Brian Thomas. Terry McLaurin, uh, my lone vet in the top five. Terry McLaurin, I think, gets a good outcome no matter who's going to Washington. If it's Jane Daniels, it's going to be better. It's going to be the best outcome. If it's Drake May, it's still going to be better because he's a willing deep ball thrower. If it's going to be J.J. McCarthy. That offense is going to run a lot better. All these things benefit McLaurin as long as they don't bring in a super stud, but they shouldn't because they're paying McLaurin like he's a super stud. Troy Franklin still here for me. Um, obviously, I think got a little too much of him at the higher price tag, but still think he's worth 20% exposure. Again, good visits for him. He was an EPA monster. He also commands target at a high rate over 30%. Troy Franklin to me is still that dude. And Romo Dunze, who I wasn't sold on until I saw the athletic testing and then got there more. When I saw he was a freak athlete too, I was willing to be on board. He definitely benefited from uh, the willingness of Michael Penix to throw the ball downfield. EPA metrics for him, a little bit lacking, but Odunze to me, still a strong player to go to. And tight ends, Brock Bowers. Bro Brock Bowers. I'm doing the Paul, Paul, Paul Heyman thing there for Brock Lesnar, though. Again, Brock Lesnar is still canceled. Brock Bowers, though, not canceled. And frankly, I think our guy Adam has said it before. I think he could be tight end one next year in drafts. I, I think if nothing else... He could be in Trey McBride range next year in drafts. I think that's the more likely outcome. Uh, but Brock Bowers excites me a lot. A strong player here. Very good one. Davis Allen is free. So some of my Davis Allen exposure was heavier before Colby Parkinson went there. Colby Parkinson's getting enough money that I'm a little bit worried about it. But Allen earned targets at a high rate and was a really high EPA receiver for what he did last year when Higby went out. So a little bit vestigial for Davis Allen. I wouldn't, I don't think I want this much necessarily, but Davis Allen to me is a stand I believe in. Ben Sinnott, 22% as well. Uh, more going there early, back there now. Ben Sinnott going to be the tight end two off the board, barring somebody being in love for Javian Sanders. But Sinnott, great blocker, as well as a guy who's going to be really elusive in the pass catching game or catch the pass, can break it off after that. Uh, I love to see that. Kind of reminds me of Kittle in that respect. So Sinnott to me, tight end three. Hunter Henry is cheap and correlates with Drake May or Jaden Daniels or JJ McCarthy, depending on the, the yarn you want to spin. And Michael Mayer in year two. Uh, some mock drafts, I think the NFL mock draft right now, uh, NFL.com one has, uh, they want Brock Bowers to go to Vegas. I don't know why you do that when Michael Mayer 
is not Brock Bowers, but he was a guy that was held in similar esteem and he just took him last year. I think that'd be a stupid move. I think Michael Mayer undervalued as well. There we go. 30% Brock. Adam, contain your excitement. <laughs> You know, and uh, somewhat surprised you able to get 20% Troy Franklin given how it was everyone's mission to snipe him from you. That is true. That is the joy of splash play. But look, even when we have too many regulars and drafts, we still do the drafts every day, Monday to Friday, 11 a.m. I'm going to try to change it around, I guess, because now we got guys beating the system <laughs> that I started to get uh, in place here. But try to do the best I can to show you guys real drafts and how to handle them and how to make it work. So uh, please subscribe down below. Hit that like button, of course. Uh, all your likes really do matter a lot here. It sounds like a vanity metric, but it's not. It's the one thing that tells YouTube that people want to see this video. And that helps me out a lot here because uh, fucking Liam Murphy's doing five drafts at once. I got I'm competing here. <laughs> so hit the like button if you can. And please show some love. And of course, subscribe. Hit the join button if you really care. And shout out to all the people who have. Underdog promo code splash, double your deposits, 100 bucks. Probably promo code splash gets you 50% off, probably.com slash subscribe. You can also enter to win a guest hosting spot on Splash Play. I will leave the App Store version of probably down in the pinned comments. Leave five stars and a review, and you'll be entered to win our guest hosting giveaway next Monday, where you can do a draft with me, and then I have to listen to you and I have to hear your takes, and hopefully you'll do as good a job as our guy Chunk did a couple weeks ago. Stochastic, get in there for the PGA. I have to give this an update because I think we lost some members and added, I think, at least one more. But shout out to the Squirt Squad overall and, and thumbs down <laughs> for everybody who's no longer a member. I know, I know, but I'll, I'll fix it. It's fine. Um, yeah, that's it. Back tomorrow with more. And uh, here's a shock Pikachu on the way out. Always got to click one GIF on the way out. That's the one you get. He's shocked to hear that I have 20% Troy Franklin somehow, that I overcame. All right, see you guys tomorrow, 11 a.m. Enjoy your days, guys. Good luck. Bye.